In the summer of 2016, a team assembled at the Royal College of Surgeons in London for one of the most specialist of all medical procedures, a post-mortem. But this was a post-mortem with a difference. The team would be looking specifically at how obesity affected the body, and the procedure would be filmed for BBC Three. It was a unique event and had raised a whole series of ethical and practical challenges, including finding a body that could best illustrate the medical effects of obesity. To source the body for the post-mortem, the team had to become part of the transatlantic system for the movement of body parts. At their facility on the outskirts of Los Angeles, Cyan's Care received the bodies of donors. In their labs, the bodies are dissected and specific parts are removed or procured before being dispatched all around the world. I work in the procurement lab, so I do the procedures. I am the one that procures the whole body. I personally thought that I was in suited. Since I was little, I always had a problem with death. You know, I was always afraid of it. I never knew how to um, cope with it. But my love for science and medicine overpowered that. And knowing that what I do is helping that me medical advancement is just the greatest satisfaction that I can get. Earlier this year, they contacted the program team to say they had a body that could be suitable for the post-mortem. She was in her early 60s, five foot five, almost 17 stone, and she had recently died of heart failure. She was frozen on site, carefully sealed, boxed and packaged for the flight to the UK. In order to qualify as a body part, an arm was removed. Every year, thousands of body donations pass through this facility. Each is vital to medical science. I'm a future donor. I'm a big supporter of medical research and scientific studies, and it kind of just kind of uh, corresponds with my own personal values. When you see uh, where an action that you can do now in the future has an impact on, let's say, a child with cancer or other people who are dealing with obesity like I am and have disorders that are either caused by the obesity or the obesity has you know, made worse, uh, these are all things that, you know, that would be nice for me to be able to help others. All post-mortems are tightly regulated to ensure donor bodies are treated with respect as research is carried out on them. Cameras are not usually permitted, but the BBC was allowed in to film on this occasion, and a special licence was approved for the event. The production team worked closely with the Human Tissue Authority to ensure filming preserved the dignity and privacy of the donor at all times. So the Human Tissue Authority is a statutory regulator, which means we're a, we're a kind of watchdog. Um, we have a very specific role, which is set out by law, um, and that is to ensure the safe and ethical use of human tissue. So in doing that, we, we regulate through licensing and inspection any organisation that stores or uses bodies, body parts or human tissue. The BBC and the filmmakers, I think, recognised early on that it would be a very powerful programme if they were able to show the effect of obesity on the inside of a body. So we can all see when somebody's obese and there are terms like um, morbidly obese and clinically obese to describe the extent to which somebody is considered to be overweight, but we don't know what's going on inside the body. For young people who may have some very important life choices to make about what they eat and how they eat and how they want to live their lives, the important messages that the programme gives about the life-limiting nature of obesity and the potential health problems, I think those messages are delivered very strongly in the programme. The pathology team conducting the autopsy 
could not know what would be revealed. But the examination showed striking evidence of the impact of obesity on the insides of our donor. Excessive quantities of fat in the abdomen and dangerous accumulations around the internal organs. With every post-mortem that I do, I learn something new. But I think in this situation with our post-mortem, not only was I learning, but the public have also had the privilege of, of learning those incredible um, secrets of the inside of the human body that I would see on a daily basis. Obesity is, it's, it's very much, it's very much there, it's seen, but I think it's very, very poorly understood. And it seemed that making this film would be an, a way of exploring that and allowing a broader public to, to learn about the problems that are associated with obesity. Blood vessel here is the aorta. This is the vessel that takes all the blood from the heart around the body. In addition to the educational purpose of the film, our donor has contributed to medical research in another way. A small selection of her tissue will be retained and used in medical studies at the Royal College of Surgeons, helping researchers and students understand how obesity affects the workings of our most vital organs. At the end of the post-mortem, the organs are put in a bag and placed inside the body. The cadaver is then stitched together. Our donor was returned to the United States for cremation. Her gift, a valuable insight into how obesity, the greatest health crisis facing us in the future, damages us on the inside. <laughs>